when we started this, it was, you know, chaotic at the beginning because, of course, the beginning of the war, no one expected an invasion. But we were ready. We were ready to, to provide our services. But I think that what is the, the overall situation is that as the war continues to go on, the needs are going to become more and more, even on the medical front. And that means qualified medical personnel, equipment, and, uh, I mean, things are wearing out. Um, you know, this, this ambulance, for example, uh, it has over 100,000 kilometers on it. Um, you know, it's moving, you know, things, uh, things are, are needed to, to keep up the pace. And so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to keep up the pace with the war. We're trying to stay motivated. We're trying to stay the best that we can so we can save as many lives. And can you keep up with it? What kind of strain is it putting you under? Well, I think that probably one of the, the hardest strains is that, you know, we don't uh, publicize our work so much due to security concerns. We are, are quiet and humble in our job and as the war continues to go on with no end in sight, uh, the need for assistance and continued help to support MOAS is, is desperately needed. Yeah, and we've been up on the front line, well near the front line, one of the uh, stabilization centers where the soldiers are coming in from the front line and what's clear there, what the doctor's saying is that as the Russians retreat, they're leaving a lot of mines and the, and the war's getting more dangerous in that sense. Oh, yeah. So different kinds of injuries. Is that what you're seeing as well? Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, you see a variety of, of different injuries where from mine blasts to gunshot wounds to artillery, uh, it's all happening on a daily basis. And so you really can't say that one injury is happening more than the other. I, I, what we do see is that um, we continue to see a steady flow of patients on the front line. The war is happening every day. It's not stopping and young men and women are losing their lives uh, unnecessarily. And so for, for us and for Moas and, and what is our motivation is that we want to see uh, those people, those, those, those people who came here to defend their country, uh, to, uh, to, to, to see their children again, to hug their wife again. That is why we're working so hard. And this is why we're so proud of our numbers of, of having never lost a, a patient to date. Right, so you're bringing the soldiers in from near the front line to these right. hospitals here. Right. You've not lost a single life uh, so far. Right. Do you think there's the support for the Ukrainians is, is there a kind of sense of fatigue? Do you think will that affects your funding a year and a half in? Well, I think that most people understand that the most critical element of this is that Ukrainian men, men and women that are on the front line that are defending their country is the most critical element. And I think that the, 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 the most important thing that we can do for them is to help them in their most critical time of need. And as much help and as much medical care that we can give them, we're going to give them a second chance. We're going to give this country um, a post-war economy because we have people alive that have fought this war that want to build the country. So it's not just about um, saving a life, it's, it's giving that uh, opportunity for them to build their country again.